Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you are having a great Saturday. Today is going to be a flea market finds video. I told you guys the other day that I picked up some cards at a local flea market. And as well, I have a box that I forgot to include in the Kentucky flea market finds video. I guess it, it was coming back from the Kentucky trip. What was it? Anything from Kentucky. But first we're going to start off by letting you guys know that Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, I will be live streaming. We will be doing the break for the 1992 Black Max box. Um, got a couple people involved in that. Wes will have one spot. Beans Card Blog, you will have three spots. And in that break, of course, I'm going to have to get my laptop, laptop charged up so that, that way we can do the randomizer, figure out who gets what piles. Hopefully, you guys will walk away with a bunch of cool cards. Definitely opportunities for some really great rookies in there. We're hoping we can pull a Dale Earnhardt 1989 Max. That would be awesome. Beans, I know you're really looking forward to that. I know you'd like to pull one of those. Wes, you probably would as well. You guys have your favorite drivers, your favorite sets, etc., etc. So we're going to have some fun Monday night. So that's 7 p.m. Eastern time. Mark that down. We will be live. We will be doing a live stream. The randomizer, break in the box, and just, you know... Hopefully having some chat in the uh, chat room for you guys as well. So anyway, let's get started with the Flea Market Finds video. This is just a stack of cards that I got. These cards were most of them were 25 or 50 cents. Got some nice stuff here. 1984 Donruss Frank Viola. I was looking at this kind of close and it's very well centered. The corners are nice and sharp on it. I don't like the colors of the back. It's like a toothpaste colored back. But that's, uh, that is what it is for 1984. Uh, I did have some original 1984 Donruss cards from my house when I was growing up. I don't know how or when or why I got them, but I, that's uh, one of the sets I remember growing up. Got this Nolan Ryan Tops 50, is that 50 years? Yeah, Golden Moments, probably one of his no-hitters. May 1991, yep, that's when he got his no-hitter. Always like this card. I may only have it one or two, one or two of them from 1991 Upper Deck, the Ricky Henderson. I don't want to call it Magic Motion or anything like that, but it's just uh, multi multiple exposure, I guess you could call it, or fast shutter. Really like those cards back in that day. Got a 92 Upper Deck Trevor Hoffman Cincinnati Prospects, and we're going to some football here. Got a press pr pr press proof. Of Todd Gurley II. It's a nice looking card, red foil. Then we have a Brian Grease. Uh, Grease A, Grease A, I don't know. Uh, Future Shock. Like that card, looked pretty cool. Picked it up as well. We have an Alex Rodriguez Fleer Premium. I think this is about 2000, 2004 ish. Let's look at 2001. So I got the kind of book ended it pretty good when he was with the Rangers. Of course, he was with the Mariners and later with the New York Yankees. Larry Walker, Members Choice Stadium Club card. I believe that might be from 92. Let's take a look at that. 92, 93. Somewhere around in there. Nice looking card. Then a Brandon Whedon, rookie, but it is numbered uh, 59 out of 150. Thought that was just a pretty cool. I think it was either 25 or 50 cents. Hey, I'll take numbered cards all day at that price. So pretty cool little card there. A Hank Aaron, Greatest Players. Of course, Hank recently passed away. I guess it was earlier this year. I don't want to say recent like it was last week. A couple of Mickey Mantle Collection insert cards from 2018 Panini Diamond King. So this is the checklist. And this is number MM5. So very cool. 1990 uh, Larry Walker. And this was the one that I liked the most out of them. An 82 Fleer Dave Stewart rookie. So you see the back of it. Very nice looking card. Has all the different teams there you see. His ERA, the Dodgers logo, etc, etc. I believe it is Fleer. Yeah, 1982. So had a lot of fun picking those up. They, they did open a couple extra booths over there of sports cards. So I'm going to have to here in another week or so go over there and spend just three or four hours just rummaging through all the singles and see what I can find. But this was a pickup I got at one of the antique malls, flea markets, everything. It's just a Nike box that they filled full of sports cards, and they did put a lot of repeats in here, so we're not going to cover the entire ground. I can't remember what I paid for this, maybe $10 or something. Cause it does have some decent stuff in here, and then it does have some stuff that's... Uh, just downright, why did they put that in the box? 
So I'm just going to kind of make these stacks here because it's going to go pretty quick if I can get it out of the box. There we go. And, and you'll see real quick once I start going through these cards, and I don't know why people do this, but you've seen it on eBay where somebody will, pardon my arm being in the way of the camera, but I've seen it on eBay frequently where somebody will just have a 78 card lot of some random player, which is kind of what this looks like. But we're going to start off, we had a Thurman Thomas, so there's quite a few Thurman Thomas cards in this, I'm not going to complain about that. Got a lot of nice Thurman Thomas cards from the early 90s. So if we have some Thurman Thomas fans out there, maybe we can swing some sort of transaction if you'd like that. But nonetheless, then I think we had a lot of Henry Ellards. Never heard of the man. So, yeah, and then Cortez Kennedy there. So th there's just these random lots in here, and I wasn't sure, you know, exactly what the deal was. There's another Thurman Thomas. So I will get these separated by player. Um, so I thought it was interesting that they just had all these... There, there's about eight different players in here that there's just ridiculous amounts of. Joe Dumars, this one in here, I mean, you can just see if... if I, I could wallpaper my, my house with Joe Dumars collector's choice cards. So I guess that'd be cheap wallpaper. Uh going to kind of skip around here in these stacks, so I don't know what we're going to come across. Latrell Sprewell, Billy Owens. So again, just some random Mark Price Gold 1992 tops, I believe. Yep. Um, who's that? Orlando Woldridge. So again, just some random. There's just really random basketball players in here. Dale Davis, Dikimbi Matumbo, familiar with them. Ron Harper. Who is that? Uh, Terry Deher. Harry Grant, or Gary Grant, I'm sorry, not an actor from, from way back when. Antonio Davis, I remember him playing for the Pacers. Sean Elliott, Vinny Del Negro. And these are nice looking cards. I'm not going to not gonna knock those at all. They're very nice. Top, Tops always had some nice basketball designs back in the early 90s. Regan Upshaw, Pete... Metal Azars, I guess. Patrick Sapp. So you can see there's just a, an array of... I wasn't sure what I was going to get. I figured it would be Junk Wax era stuff, which some of this falls into that category. Some of it doesn't. There's some... You know, there's nothing here that's like, wow, I got to have that card, or, you know, wow, that just made that an incredible deal. But, you know, for 10 or $15, if I can buy you know, a thousand cards or whatever ended up being in this mess, I'm going to say it's probably closer to 650 or 7 but still not not too bad. I'm happy with the purchase. And that, that's something, something that I want to express to a lot of collectors out there. Don't go out there thinking, okay, I want to buy this for $10 and turn around and sell it for $200. If you're in this hobby, have fun with it. Enjoy what you collect. Go out there again. Here we have more of these Thermos Thomas cards. I can't express to you guys enough. It's a hobby meant to be enjoyed. It's not day trading. It's not the stock market, which it can be treated as such. And I've and I've watched many videos online uh, on YouTube here, different people talking about investing in sports cards and such. And that's great. That's all fine and dandy. But I think personally, for me, for sports cards, it, it allows me to escape escape reality in a sense and if you're a joe dumars fan you are loving this video um but no it's it's just a hobby it's a getaway it's a gateway whatever you want to call it i've just always enjoyed and been drawn to sports cards even though i don't watch many of these sports hardcore like some of you guys do that know all the player averages and know when they're getting traded and know when you know when the last time that they you know had a home run or a touchdown or or what have you. you you guys are awesome on that stuff and i can appreciate and respect that of course that's the way that i am with nascar and so that's why i enjoy doing the nascar cards so much but these other sports it kind of helps me learn a little bit more about the other sports maybe some of the other players the other celebrities and dignitaries and etc etc involved and it, it helps me i don't want to say helps me but it allows me to get involved with more people in the card community, either 
on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever. You know, we are card collectors, and that's what we enjoy doing. So just, you guys need to, you know, collect what you like, buy what you like. Don't open a pack and be like, is this worth something? Is this, you know, open the pack because that's what you want to have fun with. That, that's what I do. That's why, you know, I'm you know, going to do a break on Monday, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. You know, I'm not getting rich off the off the break by any stretch of the imagination, and the guys involved, you know, I hope they pull some really awesome cards out of that. But, they, you know, everybody that I've really uh, been involved with here on YouTube and, and the other communities seem to genu genuinely enjoy the card collecting aspect, the trading, the buying, the selling, everything that goes along with it. I don't think any of us are trying to create a business because it would be to me a really poor business model but you know that just i'll get off my soapbox now and let you guys enjoy the tim hardaway and charles barkley and other Ooh, james worthy that's pretty good who do we have here sean kemp so we got some strong cards here from that junk wax air if you want to call it that again no autographs no hits these are just all sorts of flipped around so it's almost like somebody had a, all these cards separated. But if you're a Joe Dumars fan, I've got your hook up here. Um, I don't know much about him. Played for the Pistons. So if you're a Joe Dumars fan, you know, talk about him in the comments. So I don't have much to say here. I'm, again, I'm kind of rapid firing through these cards because I don't want to bore you with Joe Dumars or the other guy that we have a ton of. Paul Farron. So yeah, these are all Paul Farron cards. Now this is kind of cool. This is probably the highlight of the box to me. The 1984 Tops 1983 Highlight Johnny Bench, Gaylord Perry, and Kara Yastrzemski card, which I have a ton of those, as you can see. But then there's that Paul Farron card. Once again, we have a ton of that. Terry Wooden, several of that card. So who, whoever was the original owner of these like they must have just liked three or four different players that's all i can say because there's not there's not a great deal of variety and i'm not complaining about that i just think it's i don't want to say odd or strange but there's always some interesting interesting cards when you come across lots that you just buy at random you know i don't want to say sight i'm unseen i could see a couple of these cards in the top of the box and it's like well maybe there's some really good stuff in it Maybe there's some treasures. That's that's why we like to do this. It's uh, you know, it's almost like ripping packs because you don't know what you're going to get. You know, you you know what you're not going to get. But at the same time, it's just a just a fun little thing that us card guys and gals like to do. Go out and and just purchase random lots and just try our luck. Got a, several eighty-five Donruss cards here, but there's not any anything ridiculously strong in it we'll get behind these football cards here so you had some alvis davis chris cordoli doug flynn pat sheridan so you can see just your average mid 80s i don't want to say utility but just average ball player so nothing nothing exciting there no major rookies no hall of famers to speak of got a couple more stacks that we'll peek through here real quick Got some star rookies. Is that Jeremy Bonderman? Then we got some random football. Again, nothing super exciting, but definitely something that I'll have fun going through. Maybe this, maybe some of this can be TTM material. That's uh, something that I have to consider as well. Get some TTMs going on, which I am way, way, way behind on, which I apologize. I shouldn't apologize. Oh, this was the other thing that I seen on the top. These True Value Superstars Collector Series reggie jackson it's like a little i don't even know what it is it's still sealed up there's a handful of those as well it looks like through here yeah there's a few of those so i'm not real familiar with what those are another johnny bench yastrzemski perry card bonderman again there's that one again and we're going to end with paul farron didn't want to bore you going through every single last little card but that was one of my pickups on the way back from Kentucky in Columbus, Indiana, at one of the many flea markets that we stopped at. Of course, the other ones are from my local flea market that I go to semi-regularly, maybe four or five times a year. I don't like to go once a week or once every other week or even once a month. 
I like to let them rotate through their stock and get it cleaned up a little bit and freshened up so when I go back through, it's a whole new experience. So anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flea market finds video. Remember, Monday night, 7 p.m., our live stream, our 1992 Black Max Wax Box Break. Looking forward to that. Hoping we will pull some nice stuff for those two guys that bought into the break. So once again, thanks again for watching. I'll have, hopefully weather permitting, some videos up from the Indianapolis Speed Drum tonight. Again, my wife is not racing, but there'll be some other classes there that I'm going to be f f getting uh, some pictures of as well as video. So hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.